Okay, again, this is Liz again here. I'm back with another amazing um, video. Um, this time, I really wanted um, to kind of share. Uh, again, I know we are very concerned with recession, and I did mention in one of my other videos that I do believe we're in recession. And I think that this is pretty much the article that's going to confirm it. Um, again, uh, I'm Liz Soria. I am a proactive accountant and a tax advisor, and I'm creating all these short, I call it finance updates and tips in a nutshell. Hopefully, I'm trying to make them less than 15 minutes, so hopefully I can stick to that for this uh, recording too. So anyhow, this article that I came through, is, I got it from housingwire.com, and it's so interesting because it says six recession red flags raised despite of strong jobs report. Now, what's really interesting is that he actually is providing us with a lot of charts. As you know, I do like charts and I like to see uh, percentages and everything else, which is great. Um, but what's really interesting here is that we can see based on this, it says that the, break, the, the breakdown of jobs that were created, okay, after the losses of COVID-19, okay, most of the jobs came from educational and health service. Makes totally sense, right? We need a lot of health workers and I appreciate all of you if you're listening and you are in the health sector, um, that your service was completely very, very valuable in the hardest time um, that at least I have lived, you know, in regards to having a crisis in, in a, a pandemic happening, uh, you know, across the globe. Um, so thank you for your services. Anyhow, professional and business services also increase leisure and hospitality, which it was completely shut down, right, for, for more than six months. At least, uh, obviously, construction increased because that's aligned with real estate. Manufacturing also increased. Makes sense. Why? Well, you know, there was a lot more goods that have to be produced, even though we're still having, uh, uh, you know, chain problems, you know, what they call product chain problems. Um, retail trade doesn't surprise me. It's going to keep dropping. As we know, uh, we do have the e-commerce who has become very, very strong in the last decade. Um, so I see a lot more commercial side of real estate really getting affected because of that. People not going back, as we know, to their office to work or, you know, opening small little boutique stores, uh, whether they're shoes or typical clothes. Um, I think all that eventually is going to really, um, you know, disappear. Um, if there's no food traffic, there's no business, right? Um, and we do depend a lot on small businesses. But anyhow, let's stick to the to, to the guns here uh, in regards to the red flags that I'm looking at in a green uh, with actually, uh, I want to give full credit to this one, like say he's with housewiring.com. And this was Logan uh, Motashami. I think he's his last name, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Anyhow. So one of the things I wanted to show you here that is very interesting is that he shares what he considers to be the six recessions uh, red flags. So let me go with those and break it down for you really quickly here. Like I said, I like to keep things in a nutshell, even though I do sometimes apologize if I've, I've extended more than 15 minutes, but it's because sometimes I want to bring in that much information, but yet I, you don't have to spend the hours that I do researching this information. And again, if you do enjoy what I'm recording in the episodes that I'm doing, please like and share and subscribe. It really helps with the YouTube and also um, with my podcast, by the way. All right, so let's keep going here. Uh, the first thing we need to look at is the unemployment rate, okay? As it says here, um, when it falls down to a level that we started to talk about federal reserves rates and hikes, that doesn't mean as much as stimulus or employment gains. Now, right now, unemployment is supposed to be currently today, as of this recording, by the time that you probably watch this or you listen to, to the audio, uh, it is a 3.5. Now, I'm going to tell you, folks, that is not a real number. No, I hate to break it, but it's not a real number. Um, unfortunately, one of the things I have noticed about, you know, when it comes to, uh, I call it playing around with the numbers uh, to make it seem like the picture is prettier than what it really is. Um, and I'm very straightforward. It's just my personality. You might like me, you might not. That's fine. If you don't, by all means, I don't mean to offend you, but it's just I'm very blunt and I'm very honest up front. 
And I don't like when the government tries to come, you know, cover up the real numbers behind something. So that's why sometimes as much as information I get from government sites, I always like to do the ones on the side because I want to go to the right source and I want us to have the accurate information to make the right choices in the decisions that we need to make financially for our for ourselves and for our families, right? Anyhow, so it says 3.5. Like I said, it's not. They're getting this based on their unemployment rate, okay, that really shows, and I'm going to go ahead and now show you here. That way you can see. You probably are aware, and if you're not, something hopefully you might uh, pick up from, from learning here. And this is actually coming from what they call uh, microtrends.com. The U.S. 6 unemployment rate is the real number. Okay, so let me head. So for example, what's shown here is that the U, the unemployment U3 is the official unemployment rate that the U.S., okay, including discouraged workers and all the marginal attached workers is the U6, okay? Now U6 should be the number that the government should be using when they come in with these results. Now the reason why they don't use it because guess what? It's double. <laughs> so that's the bad news. Uh, so currently, like I said, usually the official government use the rate U3. Now, what's the differential? In case you don't know, well, just kind of to break it down really quickly here, the U6 adds those workers who are working part-time, okay? And could be for economical reasons, but the current U6 unemployment rate as as the most recent uh, update that I have here in this article is from July 22, it's 6.70, almost 7%. Now, if you look below the chart, it shows you right there. And if you see here, if not, I'm going to explain briefly uh, through this is back in, the, you know, in February 2020, right? And as the pandemic hit in March, okay, uh, the U6, which is what I consider the number that they should be using, okay? Again, the real number, including part-timers, because people don't realize, I know people that after the pandemic, they're working two jobs, okay? And because they were never able to replace their salary or the hourly wages that they used to make with the last company and maybe shut down. It was a small business, didn't survive COVID. I know that. I would, I've been in business since 2010 and I had my ups and downs and it's been difficult. Absolutely. Who tells you it hasn't is because they receive a lot of PPP money. It was free money to them. And a lot of small business, we didn't have that privilege. We got what called IDL loan. But anyhow, that was something that we have to pay back, not the PPP. So that's why big companies have exploded and then been able to uh, you know, grow so fast while the small business had to shut down. So that's the big difference. Anyhow, back going to this article, April of 2020 and around March, the U6, including the part-times, went as high as 22.90. That's almost 23%. Now, in the meantime, the government was telling us, oh, no, 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 it's not 23%. Oh, no, it's only 14.8, 15%. So as you look at the chart, you can see how it keeps dropping through 2021. And as we reach at, at, at towards the, the December 22, you can exactly see that right now they're claiming this 3.50 based on the other article that I just showed you. Well, guess what? It's not, it's 6.70, so almost 7%. So I just wanted to share that because that way you understand the difference between that. Because like I said, the official unemployment rate is usually a lot less and actually, if you look at it, yep, yeah, three point and a half, and it's really almost almost seven percent, six point seven zero. Anyhow, so let's click back again to the other article. So one of the things that he's saying that reflects that we need all of us to really look carefully is number one unemployment rate. Well, I just show you the real numbers. Okay, so those numbers unfortunately are increasing. Why? Because we have big companies like Zoom, Tesla, we had also even Walmart. I mean, we had even Home Depot. We had a lot of big companies out there that they start laying off, especially the new people they have hired because things were that busy and they were making so much money that they decided, sure, we can hire, we can afford to hire more people. Well, unfortunately, the people that are going to go away first are the new people. 
usually that's how most employers think alike. Um, so, and again, and that's my concern when it comes to the real estate, who's going to pay the rents, who's going to pay the mortgage. <laughs> so unemployment is a big factor in any country, right? It's not only the U S but again, please, when you look at this number three and a half, it's not. So like I said, it, it's, it's right now almost 7%. Okay. The second thing we need to look at as a red flag is the federal reserve. Okay. When they start to raise rates, well, what do I have they been doing in 22? They've been raising rates. Okay, so we have unemployment going high, all right, and it's increasing, right? So that's the first red flag. Second red flag, we have the Federal Reserves who are increasing the rates, okay? As you can see in the chart, it shows right there as we're going up, okay? All right, as far as from the time of this being, I think it's five and a half now. I mean, just a year ago it was like 2%, okay? Number three. It's when you see a red flag when it has to do with a converted yield curve. And that has to really do, okay, with generally, okay, what they call a 10 year yield slap high fives. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if you could see or hear me through the audio. So we got the 10 year year slap, okay, and that's happening. Look at the dollar bonds. I just made another video about this. If you want to invest into that with the recession, it is phenomenal. Right now, what has happened with the, the, the US government bond, high bond? It's up to almost 7%. I'm sorry, take it back, 9.6 to correct myself. And now we're expecting it by the end of this year, it's going to go probably as high as 12%. So that is backed up by government. Think about that. So this is happening. The third flag is already happening. Fourth flag, find the overheating economic sector. Okay, now well, again, we're talking about layoffs. I just mentioned it's happening. Big companies are laying off people already. If we don't have a strong economy, people cannot afford to pay for their roof over their heads. What do you think is going to happen? I think you can you can you can figure that out. It happened the same thing, unfortunately, not only during the pandemic. It happened back in two thousand eight. And finally, the fifth, I'm sorry, the fifth uh, red flag, it says about the new homes and housing stores permits fall into recession. Well, if you look at this chart, it shows that it's falling. Okay, so that's another issue that we have in already. And then we also have finally number six, which is why I really believe we are already in recession. It, it pretty much, I think we've been in recessions earlier this year. It's called the leading economic index decline four to six months, okay, before recession. Look at the rate. Look at the chart, how high we're going, okay? So my conclusion based on this article, um, he did a lot of wonderful work, who wrote this, and I, like I said, fully give him credit. I can tell you folks that I am very concerned. We are in a recession. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I wish I could say it gets better, but it actually gets worse before it gets better. Um, and again, this is the sixth recession red flags race despite strong jobs reports, which is, again, not a realistic number um, based on what I explained. So anyhow, I hope this information was helpful. Like I said, I'm trying to consolidate as much information as possible to make it feasible for you to understand it and grasp it because I know there's a lot of information out there with the news and the TV. And a lot of times it's just not validated, it really isn't. So I, I wanna make sure you get the right resource and always do your due diligence and your research. Again, I believe with this six recession red flags, they're already here. And they've been here for a while. It's just, we didn't notice it completely because there's been a lot of cover up. And I, I understand that the government is trying to keep us a piece, if you want to say, um, but we need to prepare, folks. We need to prepare not only financially, like I said, that, you know, make your money work as hard as you. This is what I tell my clients, you know, put it to work. You work hard for your money. Make sure you invest your money, you know, really, really good venues that's going to give you a good return. Stock market is going to be choppy. It's been like that since December last year. It's going to get probably worse. And this is, as soon as it get it hits the bottom, how much is the bottom? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball either. I wish I did, right? But even with that, then the real estate is going to follow. It's always been a cycle. What goes up, it goes down. And like I said, I've been um, 
I'm quite often criticized by my 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 opinion. And again, I base it because I lived back in 2008. I saw what happened to the real estate. I also happened to see to happen more unemployment in all the big changes that we had. Um, there was quite, quite sad how many people lost their jobs and how long it took them to get back on the feet. So please, again, be proactive, take your decisions, put money, like I said, I bond. I have given a lot of ideas in the last couple of videos uh, where you can make investments, giving you the heads up of what's really happening out there. And please like, share, and subscribe. It keeps my free content to a lot of people like you that you can really get the right information, okay? And uh, and I appreciate it. And I hope I see you in the next video. Like I said, I'm going to be continue recording things, hopefully this in 15 minutes. And like I said, financial updates in a nutshell. Um, sometimes I go beyond time. I apologize. But it, it, I just want to, like I said, give you as much as info as you can have. That way you can prepare uh, for whatever is coming. Um, um, better be uh, prepared than sorry, right? Anyhow, take care. Um, I appreciate you watching my channel. I know, I know you have many choices and I will be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care.